This last problem is a property problem. I'm going to lecture on this problem, and I want you to keep in mind that the one we will do here is way harder than the ones on the homework, or maybe the one on the test. But what I hope to do is just give you some strategies how you approach this type of problem. First off, part A. The question wants us to find f of 0. Now there's a really clever way to do this, which I will show you at the end of the video, but I want to show you some possibilities. We can say f of 0 is equal to f of 0 plus 0. We know that's a true statement. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a property for f of x plus y or value plus value. So according to this, property number 1, I have f of 0 plus f of 0 over 1 minus f of 0 times f of 0. That will give me 2 f of 0 over 1 minus f squared 0. Now if I cross multiply f of 0 here and distribute, I have f of 0 minus f cubed of 0 equals 2 times f of 0. And the idea is we're going to solve for f of 0. The temptation may be to divide everything by f of 0, but you might see that's what we're trying to prove is that f of 0 equals 0. So that would be somewhat of an illegal move. Not somewhat, it is an illegal move. So we have to solve for f of 0 without doing that. We need to bring this over via subtraction. So we have negative f of 0 minus f cubed of 0 equals 0. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative and factor out f of 0. And then by the zero product property, f of 0 equals 0 or 1 plus f squared of 0 equals 0. And you can see that this is illegal, this is impossible, uh, for we would have f squared of 0 equals negative 1, and that's not positive, possible, which makes us conclude that this has to equal 0. So therefore, f of 0 equals 0. And let me make that look more like a 0. Now let's take a look at part B, where it wants us to prove that f prime of x equals 1 plus f of x squared. That's what we're asked to prove using the definition of a derivative, not the definition of a derivative at x equals a, but the definition of a derivative. So we'll start off by saying f prime of x equals, using our definition, the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Then I'm going to use property 1 from above. It's helpful to have your notes in front of you. Property number 1 from above is going to have us rewrite this expression as f of x plus f of h over 1 minus f of x f of h and then we have f of x, all of that over h. Okay, in the next step, we're going to say the limit as h goes to 0. Well, this grand numerator, within this grand numerator, I want a common denominator. And it looks like this will be the common denominator of the grand numerator. So 1 minus f of x f of h. So I would need to take this one and multiply it top and bottom by that expression, which would give us f of x plus f of h okay, minus f of x times 1 minus f of x times f of h. Let's extend this. So I'm still missing this h piece here. But instead of writing it all over h, I'll multiply reciprocal, and then that h 
will make its way down here. So next I want to just do some simplification. Let's see, um, I'm going to have f of x plus f of h minus f of x, and this will distribute, plus f squared x f of h, and that is all over h times. There we have it. Okay, uh, hopefully you can see something here that the f of x is cross out. And you might also be able to see, we can do this in one step here, that we can factor out of the numerator an f of h. So f of h gets factored out in the numerator. Uh, 1 plus f squared x, like that all over h times 1 minus. So now we want to say the limit of a product is product of limits. So the limit as h goes to 0, f of h over h times the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 plus f squared x, like that over 1 minus f of x, f of h, like that. Then, let's see if I can scoot down here a little bit. Then by property number 3, this quantity here is equal to 1. So I'll write it so that I can clearly see the property being used, like that. 1 minus f of x, f of h. And then in our final property, we know the limit as h goes to 0 of f of h is equal to 0, which is going to lead us to 1 plus f squared x over 1, which equals 1 plus f of x squared, which is what we wanted to prove. Oopsie. Uh, Sorry, which is what we wanted to prove in the very beginning. Q E.